Welcome back to the Unreal for Unity Developers tutorial series. In this video, we're going to go over and basically dissect the default map in Unreal and uh, set you free so that you have a little license to tinker. You could jump in here and just start clicking on stuff and learn how different things operate by just playing around with the settings that are in there. In our last video, we made a little jump pad and we had this default scene that we were looking at that came with the third person template. So this is a little more than we need to be looking at right now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start with a blank scene. In Unreal Parlance, that would be either a map or a level. They interchangeably use those terms. In the Unity world, we call it a scene. So if we go to File, we can create a new level. And you see we get a little option here to pick a couple different things. And we want to go with the, the, the default here. Now, empty level is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a dead empty level. Default as you can see, it has a nice little skybox and a platform for you to run around on. We're just going to jump right in. Looking at the world outliner up here, you can see that there's a few things that Unreal gives us by default. If we take a look around, we have a nice little ground plane here, and we have this thing with a blue wiener, and a controller, and a little flag, and a gorgeous skybox with animated clouds. So this is basically equivalent to when you would pop open a new scene in Unity. So with Unity, you're just going to end up getting that kind of funky looking skybox and uh, directional light, and that's about it. Unreal gives you a little bit more out of the box. So let's jump in and see what we have. So if we push the play button right now, what you're going to see as the character appears in here, and you can actually run around and control the character. So let's just start off by figuring out what the heck that is. Character appeared right out of this little controller flag doohickey. So let's just take a look over here and we can see when we select it that it's called player start. And what that is, is that essentially is a spawn point. Unreal works a little bit differently with regard to your characters than Unity does. If you remember, Unreal was made with a little bit more purpose in mind. It was created at the same time as games were being made with it. So there's a lot of different things in here that are that are really built for making games, especially network games. Because if you remember, the early Epic games were all networked. So a lot of this uh, infrastructure that they give us is already in place and set up so that you can much more easily make a network game. And this is one example of it. By default, Unreal is just going to give you this player start here. And you get to specify which object gets spawned when you play. And it essentially works like a spawn point. So again, if you see when we push the play button, and it right on that spot we have our character spawned and there's a nice separation of concerns with unreal we'll go into this in, in future videos but just know right now for our purposes if you have wanted to for instance change where the player starts you could just move this around anywhere you want and when you push play that's where you're going to end up getting spawned looking over here at the outliner so next uh, we'll start at the top and just run our way down so atmospheric fog is the first thing uh, this is just a, a little atmospheric fog effect that is used by the engine. And with this particular scene, you're not really going to see much difference playing around with the settings. I mean, you'll see a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I do recommend just jumping in here and in the atmosphere section, just tootle around with this different stuff and, uh, and see what it does. But for purposes of this video, that's about all we're going to say with regard to that. Next on the list is the floor. Not really much to say about this. This is uh, just a static mesh, so uh, there's really nothing special about it. You can move it around if you want and play with it, but uh, there's not really much to say there. So going a little bit further down the list, we see we have a light source, and this is a directional light. And this would be uh, pretty much equivalent to what you would have in, uh, in Unity. You end up with a directional light when you start out with an empty scene. And we already spoke about the player start, and the next thing here is this sky sphere. And this is uh, equivalent to the default sky dome that Unity comes with, except it's an actual object in your map, as opposed to Unity where that's part of your lighting setup in the lighting panel. So if we just kind of look around, you can see we have some, uh, some layers of clouds animating here. And this is just a, a blueprint that Epic provides. And it's actually pretty neat and pretty customizable. So uh, just as an example, I'm going to show you one little tidbit here. So this sky sphere is connected to the directional light actor. And you can see that it's connected to light source. That's this directional light. 
So it's using the angle of that directional light to decide what to display. So if we go on this directional light over here and we'll press the E key to get our rotation tools or if, uh, if you like to use the mouse, you can just click on it here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this guy a little bit, move it over here. Unfortunately, this doesn't auto update, but it, once you've moved your directional light, you click this little checkbox and refresh material. You'll see you end up with a completely different setup here in the sky. So by default, what it's doing is it's using this directional light's angle to set up a time of day system. So if we end up shooting that over here like this, and then we refresh again, you'll see it kind of moves to more dusk and we're starting to get a night sky in there. And I recommend playing around with this. It's pretty neat. If you once you have it shooting directly away from your scene, you end up reaching nighttime and there's stars in there. And there's, a, there's various uh, little settings in here you can mess with to set up the, the different cloud layers and speeds and opacities and whatnot. And jump in here and definitely give it a play. Now the default section is all you'll really want to look at. Um, if you choose not to use a directional light, so if we were to select this and, for example, clear it. So now it's not using a directional light. It's instead going to use these other settings here. So you can manually set the different, uh, basically the, the angle of the sun. And you can see how it changes into a night sky with stars and basically change the whole atmosphere of the level. There's one thing that isn't included by default that I definitely think is important to, to play around with and it's quite a bit of fun to play with. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose that light source again so we get back to here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, the modes panel over here and in the volume section we have a whole bunch of different stuff but what we're going to be concerned with here is the post-process volume and this is something that's pretty much going to be in every game that you make even if you're just messing around with a little demo. So I'm just going to drop that in the scene there and what we end up with here is basically equivalent to importing Unity's post-process stack, except on steroids. You're going to get super high quality post-process effects here, image effects in Unity terminology, and a super handy way to jump in here and just mess around with the settings and get a really unique look. So you can see straight off like all of the different things that we have built in here, like bloom, dirt mask, auto exposure, lens flare, depth of field, there's motion blur, I mean, the list goes on and on. This is just a humongous pile of goodies. Now, what's interesting is that it was a volume. So if we look at this from above, so we have the, the black there that we can see. You can see it's just that little cube. So the only time this is actually going to take effect is if the player is in this cube right now. And we can change that by just looking at the post-process volume settings, and there's this unbound setting here. So if we check this box, what that's going to do is it's going to basically remove the box from play. So now anywhere in the scene, wherever the player is, there's going to be any of the post-process effects in here are going to be present. Check that box and then your homework for this one is going to be just to jump in here and give it a play. Just mess around with these settings. There's just tons of stuff. And if you're an artist especially, uh, jump in here and, and you'll really enjoy this setup here. I mean, the, the amount of things in here to play with is just humongous. I mean, you could change all kinds of stuff, like piles of image effects, all super high quality right here at your fingertips. So that's about it for this video. This one is just to get you to jump in here, tinker with some settings, you know, get used to playing around with the different uh, values and, and inspectors in, that we have in the details panel. Just mess with the post process and uh, no need to save the scene you make. And uh, just one little tidbit I'll toss in there is when you're when you're playing around with these settings, you can hover over them and you'll get nice tool tips for a bunch of different things. And you'll notice these are grayed out. So to enable those, you can just hit these check boxes and then you can change the settings by clicking and dragging around. And uh, one really cool thing that Unreal's details panel has is you'll see whenever I change any one of these values, I immediately get this little check mark. And this lets us reset things to default. So for example, if we played with auto exposure and we just ended up with a crazy wonky scene like this thing here, 
we wanted to get back to the default, you can just click on this and the entire section will be returned back to the default values. So jump in, play around with everything, and we'll be back next time actually doing something. Thanks for watching.